Greetings once again. Here we are this evening. We're looking at you and we're trying to continue to where we left off. And of course, this is such a powerful evening because we've seen all the aftermath of the psychedelic confusion that's going on. I'm using the old California term, <laughs> psychedelic confusion that's going on. We're looking through everything through a kaleidoscope. So as you turn it, all those little pieces, they fall all over the place. And then as you hone it in, you see a true picture of the colors that are associated with something that you wanted to see and you identify how cool it is or how psychedelic it is. Well, I'm here to give you truth and truth will make you free. There's so much going on that true disciples who are sticking out the process, the tribulations, the companionship of scripture will cause you to come into a dimension, a realm, a fixed place of seeing the Yah head bodily infused with your spiritual nefesh and you, your nefesh and your ruach will become one. When you became born from above and born again, born again quickened your soul, born from above quickened your spirit and they became one. But since we don't teach that, we teach it from a separate dimension, but the scripture teaches one nature, two lives. Come on, I know you haven't heard that one in a while, but if you read your Bible and study, you will see it. And if you get a, um, how can I place truth? Uh, oh, Proverbs, let's go there and let the word speak for us. But tonight is a terabyte and we're about to take a big bite into religion, a Big sandwich bike, like if you go to, uh, let's see, Jersey Mike here. Of course, they're from New Jersey, but you're here in California. Yeah, so uh, you quit eating at Subway because it was sub the way. Now you're at Jersey for Jersey Mike. I mean, where else we, we're going to go through the turnpike in Jersey. Amen? See? Jersey. Okay. So now you take a big bite of that and you probably go sideways instead of, um. Uh, and you got to know that the shin... The teeth, the shin is actually uh, like a fence that fences you in to speak only that which produces life. And the life I'm talking about is the life that Yeshua, the son of the Most High, when he incarnated the word and made flesh, he said, go ye into all the world or nations and make disciples. Why? Because the other believers the other, uh, there's unbelievers and believers in the outer court, disciples in the holy court and sons in the holy of holies. So if you don't see that, you can never achieve that because what you see is what you become. If you can see it, you can be it. And in the scripture, it notifies us, watch this in Proverbs 25, Proverbs 25, hallelujah, you got to go there. But as we're turning there, please, all of you, turn there, get a piece of paper or something and write the vision down, amen? Make and it plain. Make it plain. Thank you, Josh. He's Elder Josh. He's flowing. He's growing. I uh, already uh, laid hands on him and set him into his place of eldership. See, elders are uh, pillars in the house. And the house is made up of living stones that we take and rearrange as we're building the wall of salvation. And it's always ascending upward. That's why in the book of Nehemiah, the little foxes that were spoiled the whole bunch, okay? Talking when Nehemiah was building the wall. Uh, uh, those guys came with evil reports trying to take... Uh, Nehemiah from his course of building the wall of salvation. Remember, he went out on a horse, apostolic. Yeah, horses represent apostolic covering, apostolic insight. So Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king. So see, you're not a king, you're a cupbearer to the king. That's why he calls us in scripture, revelations again. He's the king of kings because there's only one true king but we're kings after his image and likeness see so watch this you know likeness is what we're trying to restore because image cannot be removed once you're born from above that's it the enemy cannot persuade you bamboozle you 
to give up your salvation. So in Proverbs 25, as this terabyte goes on, please hit this like and share button. Take the notes, share it with one another, and let's see if we can give you enough to keep you thinking until the next time we get together and have our terabyte. Until then, please turn with me to Proverbs 25 and 2. It is the glory of Yahuwah to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings with an S. Because he's the, see, let's put it this way. It is the glory of the king to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings is to search out a thing. And then you can go to Deuteronomy 29, 29 and Romans eleven thirty three. I didn't say turn there. I said you can go there at your go, good, at your own time. Write it down. That's why we ask you to get a pen, paper, your telephone, record it. But now there's the verse. You have to search things out. If you don't search them out, then you won't go to the next step. Malachi chapter 3. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi is over there by the New Testament where it starts. And if you have a Bible and you're reading it, it says New Testament. <laughs> And then the first book is Matthew. But in Malachi chapter 3, oh, this is what's amazing to me. Israel, in our understanding, in 1948, becomes a nation. They begin to populate in Israel, Jerusalem, Galilee, Nazarene, Nazareth, and all the other places. But we forget scripture, so I want to bring you into an understanding. Listen to me closely as I read from the King James one more time. Chapter 3. For I am Yahuwah, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances. Now listen to me closely. The major message in Genesis, third word, in the Bereshit. He was trying to tell us the message is the Father's Son all through Scripture. This is why we're in our mess right now. We're trying to come up with revelation knowledge concerning messages instead of seeing and bearing witness of the only message, which is the duplication, the reproduction of sons on the planet. Because every one of us that are born again, you get exousia, which is an authority from the word. The word, listen to me, the word has authority. But the father in Genesis didn't say, just go ahead and have authority. He said, take dominion. We have not taken dominion in the land because we have not reproduced or produced or duplicated sons on the earth. Sons on the earth, not sons in heaven. What good is it going to be for sons to be in heaven? And you're captivated with all the beauty that is going to be shown to you while you're in heaven. The father wanted to manifest his children who grew up into becoming sons as the image of the king. That's why he called us kings. And he's the king. He is the Father. He is the, who? hallelujah. He is the Ruach Kadosh. Because watch, <laughs> character, nature, and function is all one, Echad. So here in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am Yahuwah, I change not. Okay? Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jacob was a supplanter. Listen to me, family. If you can see it, and you know the history of Jacob, you don't have to even read it. Just imagine with your mind, you already know what he did. He supplanted and stole his own brother's, oh God, covenant inheritance. He put on hair on his own hair because he was, you know, a nice, bright, yellow, vanilla looking without hair. Most of us that got hair, you know, we're a little darker than <laughs> white. I'm not trying to pun nothing. I'm just trying to tell you. And he says, you're not consumed. Though you're sons of Jacob, you're not consumed. Why? Because I change not. 
The word that he gave when he said, oh, catch this, when he said, let there be light. In this darkness, there was nothing created that was created. Everything was in a pure black easel. And the canvas was totally black. Why black? Because that accentuates, that magnifies color. So when the Father said, let there be light, light came and the canvas began to take on the very image of the words that the Father spoke, decreed and declared. Today, he still has the same purpose in his heart for mankind. Let there be light. Light is not just a flashing beam and still traveling. It's also in a time of space time lapse where it slows down so light becomes congealed blood the blood is congealed <laughs> why because light is slowed down so that the dna in that blood can be mixed with yours and mine and yet the father's light kept going further ahead of that time span to create blood why? Because he already knew that the son had to have blood because he also was going to become flesh. All this was taking place in the realm of light. The father also in the same breath with the same release. That's why Ruach is broken breath. When you're speaking out of your pay, breath, Ruach is beginning to touch you right there. I'm breathing out of my being. And the Father wrote out in the Spirit, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Va, Het, Tet, all the way down till he got to 22 letters. And in doing so, he released those and they were in light. And today we refuse to go back and do just a little history check. Proverbs 25 and 2. The glory of the king was to hide something and the glory of kings is to search it out. But because we don't want to, we're stuck on King James and King James is full of, yeah, a little bit of <laughs> conspiracy, changing names, changing truths. Now go on. We went from Malachi, uh, we went to, what was the first verse? Uh, Proverbs 25 and 2, Malachi 3 and 6, 3 and uh, 5 and 6 if you like. Now we're going to go to uh, uh, Romans chapter, no, no, go to Revelations 3. We'll just go right there because I'll probably run out of time, so we're going to need this. Okay, now Revelations chapter 3, this is a great Revelation verse. Chapter 3, and I'm going to start in verse 7 and read to verse 13. Now, in the book of Revelation, John begins to get caught up in the Spirit, and he says, by the Spirit, by revelation knowledge, when John begins to write, he's writing from a revelation that he's receiving by the light, because the entrance of the word bringeth light and gives understanding unto the simple. Simplify the word. The word said in the word, I never change. I will remain like this and you're not consumed because the promise that I made that I would have sons in the earth. If I would have destroyed you, Jacob, you wouldn't have had 12 sons and the 12 sons wouldn't have became Israel and have many sons. Israel themselves became a nation and the nation began to change from the Hebrew dialect from the Greek Aramaic dialect and they started speaking English they started producing okay an understanding for people like yourself and I that want to search the scripture and get history background history now let's take it from that I've got a few minutes the book of Philemon or no, no, the book of Revelations, but Philadelphia, the church at Philadelphia. Now watch as I read. Let this be a commentary to you. As many are watching, please listen closely because we need what Paul said. Paul said in, in a Corinth, he said, if you don't, you could have prophecy, discernment, power, laying on the hands, immersing people in the power. But if you don't have love, you're like a... Uh huh. Symbol, clanging symbol, bring, 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 making no sound but making a sound. That's why the Father flows in frequencies. 
and he uses the letters in Hebrew to give you the truth frequency that opens you up because watch this, Shamaim. Shamaim means eyes to see and ears to hear. And you're hearing what the Spirit is saying, Ruach Kadosh. But we call it the Holy Spirit and we speak in tongues. That's outer court language. Holy court language. <laughs> Come on, Proverbs and, and Proverbs and parables he spoke in the outer court. That's baby. Then you had word of knowledge. That's going now to mysteries and secrets. Why? Because the mysteries and secrets are being unfolded. And the reason they're being unfolded, apocalyptic, unveiling, why? Because you're about to enter into a relationship of intimacy, into me, you see. And you're becoming more interested in your father who put his DNA in you, and that's why you're a son. And because you were born again, you had authority, but you haven't developed dominion. And dominions only develop when you come under true apostolic, uh-huh, rhema. Not revelation. Apostolic rhema is the word that's coming out of you with inspiration and impartation so that you could produce a manifestation of the Yahed bodily, spirit, soul, and body. You will work the work, and death has no power over this body, this flesh. He said, I came to give you life and life in. Uh-huh, come on, life more abundantly. Would you think he would stop? Why did Paul write in 1 Corinthians 15 and said, death, where's your victory? But see, Paul could not live out the scripture that he was getting by revelation. Because if he started getting it by revelation and a rhema word, he would have lived after that rhema word and Paul would exist right now. But he left it for a generation, <laughs> for such a time as this, we're here on this planet teaching this right now, revealing this right now. That's why we all have to get along in Philadelphia love, which here on the board, you can see it. You have storage love in the outer court, right there, storage love. I wonder why it's storage. Well, what do you do if you go rent a storage? You put things in. You know why it's in the outer court stories love? Because everybody's conning each other. You take money by preaching the gospel through the pulpit, the brazing altar. You're not worried and, and you're not convinced and you're not under conviction that you should be doing things properly, decently, and in order. Like when light came. Light is still traveling all through your being. That's why there's times that you go through pain in your physical body because the word hasn't grown up in that area. Right now, all day today, my right knee was bugging me and I was in prayer. I was quoting. I was doing everything just till now. All day till right now, it's diminishing so I can get a good night's sleep. I pray for all of you that, that, that are watching. I know I have a few minutes left and someone tried to text me while they're watching and telling me something, but I got to finish my program. But here in, oh my goodness, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. Father, let me slow down and impart by inspiration. The realm of true apostolic fathering has nothing to do with coaching or mentoring. Ooh. Apostolic fathering is what Paul said when he said you have 10,000 teachers who might have taught you, come on now, taught you the scripture, but you have not many fathers who have circumcised you for ministry. Mm. The ministry is the act, the works of that son on the planet with authority and dominion. And the last but not least, it's authority, dominion, and reproduction. The ideal son walks in an integrity. He walks with an inspiration. He walks with the kingdom kratos. He walks with full of deutimus. He walks with full authority. And he walks with dominion. 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 And a king has to have a kingdom for dominion to begin to be exercised. That's why we don't see dominion, because we're all fighting to see who's going to be the first king.
king of the block. Well, there's only one king, and he sent his son to show us the way. <laughs> That's why we are to serve one another and esteem one another better than ourselves. Revelations 3, verse 7. And to the angel, the Malachim, of the Ecclesia in Philadelphia, right? These things says he that are, oh, these things saith he that is, what? Kadosh. Why Kadosh? Because he's speaking from the Holy of Holies. These things said he that is holy, Kadosh, he that is true. Oh, wait a minute. My name is truth because my word is true. See, he doesn't vacillate and have a problem with his identity. We still do. When we know who we are, we're going to speak in truth. And what we speak is true because it's him in you. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. He that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know you're going somewhere, but that's not where I'm going. Next verse. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Why little strength? If you could see, David was anointed in three realms. Prophet, prophet, prophet priest, and king. What of the three realms would exercise great strength? A prophet, a priest, or a king? The king, that's why the king sits on his throne. He doesn't even decree. He doesn't even uh, say a declaration. He doesn't summon the people. He doesn't do anything anything unless he's in a seated posture so when we talk about sitting in heavenly places what do you think he's really saying you sons that are seated in heavenly places begin to exercise your dominion over the kingdom that your father's king of he's my king us men here are kings with an s of the king let me read the next verse Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are apostles and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. <laughs> yeah, bah, 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 bah. Hallelujah. Oh, wait a minute. They are Jews. How did I get apostles? Maybe I got mixed up. Maybe there's those Jews that call themselves apostles and at the same time, at the same time, they do claim, let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. See, and in their soulish realm, for you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you got to think Jewish. Because you're trying to spare a culture. I won't go there, but till next week. So if you want the answer and continue to hear where we're headed, Stay tuned, come back, and let us speak impartation. Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I thank you that my friends that are watching from a different, hallelujah, region are taking authority and they're exercising their dominion. We will all come into the full stature of our dominion. And you will see it work in this lifetime, in this lifetime, before the crow. <laughs> Three times. Because Peter denied the, the son when the son said, Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you agape me? Feed my sheep. And he couldn't deny it. Peter had to go back and learn how to feed the sheep to take dominion. Until we see each other again, shalom.